Now, let's do it the formal steps again. The null is that the data are normal, normally distributed. The alternative is just that they're not. They're not normally distributed. We're going to use a chi-squared statistic with k minus 3 degrees of freedom. Now, normally we only have k minus 1 degrees of freedom, but we're going to take away <coughs> two more degrees of freedom when we're doing this normal case. And the reason is that we've used up a degree of freedom when we calculated x bar and the sample standard, uh, the sample variance from our sample. That's a little bit complicated for you to understand right now, but just know that we are going to use k minus 3 degrees of freedom. So in order to find the critical value in this case, we've got 10 minus 3. So we've got 7 degrees of freedom. This, we had a chi-squared of 7.2. We should see a value over here, right? So 7.2, we should see a p-value over here. But since the p-value is missing, we know that the p-value is greater than 20%. We know that the p-value for chi-squared equals 7.2 is greater than 20%, which means that we can accept the null. So as far as we can tell, the test scores seem to be normally distributed. I want to just summarize the steps taken in order to compute the goodness of fit test for a normal distribution. The first thing that we need to do is determine the number of bins. And we do this by ensuring that at least five expected counts uh, exist per bin. In other words, what we are going to do is take the total number of observations in our sample and divide that by five to get k, the number of bins. And this is the maximum number of bins that we can use. We can decide to use a smaller number of bins, but for now we can just assume that we'll use k bins. Once we know how many categories we, we're we are going to have, how many bins we're going to have, we have to, to look at the normal curve and find the z-scores that form the boundaries of the k bins, assuming that there's an equal number of probab an equal amount of area or an equal amount of probability in each of the bins. Once we know our z-score boundaries, we're going to convert them back into the raw x values. You're then going to take the raw x values, those cutoffs, and count the observed frequencies from our actual sample of x's in each of the bins. Once we know our observed frequency, we know that our expected frequency, and if we followed these steps, the expected frequency in each case will be 5. Then we can compute, uh, using our observed and our expected, we can compute the chi-squared statistic. We can look up the p-value of that chi-squared statistic using k minus 3 degrees of freedom and we can come to a conclusion about the test.